Welcome to this DMC video blog titled, Planning a Successful SharePoint Portal. My name is Rick Reitz, and I'm Director of Consulting Services at DMC. Today, I'll provide a very brief introduction to SharePoint, and then I'll dig into functional planning, technical planning, and implementation planning for your SharePoint portal. So first, what is SharePoint? It's a technology that makes it easy to find, share, and manage content. And there's over 100 million users of SharePoint worldwide, and it's one of Microsoft's most successful products ever, having surpassed over a billion dollars in sales faster than any product they've ever released before. And one of the reasons it's been so successful is that SharePoint is browser-based. It's very easy to use, and it's very easy to share information. You might also be surprised to learn that Microsoft licensing for the basic versions of SharePoint is actually free. So SharePoint can do a ton of different things, and it's a fantastic value. It's rare for any individual business to exploit all of its capabilities, but I have highlighted a few of its more popular features here. Around collaboration, you can create project and team sites. It includes a lot of project management capabilities as well. Regarding business processes, it includes a workflow engine. For content management, it includes a document management engine, and this includes an audit trail and version history for any documents that you upload into SharePoint. Its search feature allows you to index all the content you upload into SharePoint, but you can also point it at your network drive, and it will index every word in every document that's on your network drive. Regarding Web 2.0 capabilities, its most powerful feature is around wikis, and that includes documenting your best practices and standard operating procedures in a way that's extremely easy to maintain, and it's all browser-based. And finally, one of its more, I think, overlooked features is business intelligence. SharePoint allows you to track your key performance indicators and view it in a visual fashion in a SharePoint dashboard. So SharePoint will affect the entire business, and it's very important to make sure that all the departments have a very good understanding of SharePoint's capabilities. And it's important for each department then to identify which SharePoint features is going to help them improve their effectiveness most. So you might want to try looking at each, each of your departments, all of its features, and create a matrix similar to the one you see here. Selecting the right version of SharePoint is also critical. And I've highlighted some of the most popular features so you can see in which version of SharePoint those features fall. To learn more about the different versions of SharePoint, I'd encourage you to view my DMC video blog titled Feature Comparison of SharePoint Versions. Now SharePoint 2010 was just released and it includes some very key improvements. Uh, first off, Microsoft Office Ribbon, that's now part of SharePoint as well. So it makes it a lot easier for people to get up to speed on how to use SharePoint. The new version of SharePoint is also a bit more efficient and a lot of users are very happy to hear that its cross-browser support has been greatly uh, improved by supporting Firefox and Safari. And lastly, uh, it's even more scalable than in the past, uh, being able to store terabytes of data in multi-million item lists. So taxonomy planning is critical and it's often overlooked when you begin a SharePoint initiative. And to maximize benefits, the content on your portal must be organized in a way that makes it easy for your employees to find information very quickly. And you also need to plan it out in a way that you'll be able to grow into it uh, down the road. So this is an example of a SharePoint map in which you might plan out how exactly you're going to organize your content in SharePoint. Next, when it comes to planning the technical infrastructure, um, the basic way to do it is a single server. And this is appropriate for a very small organization. And you'll include the web server, the indexing server, and the actual database all on a single device, uh, even within a single virtual server. Uh, it makes it very fast and easy to set up, uh, but you are limited a bit as far as data capacity as well as that, the ability to have some redundancy and load balancing. So probably what's more popular is what's called a farm. And here you might have two different servers that could be virtualized, and you'll have a dedicated database, and then you'll have a separate server to serve up SharePoint and provide some of its other application capabilities. If you add a second front-end server, you then get that failover ability so that makes it a lot more of a reliable solution. Uh, a medium farm, again, SharePoint is scalable. So for 
you know, a few hundred people, you definitely probably want to have two front-end servers so that you do have the failover and reliability. And also, uh, if you are implementing SharePoint to do some searching, um, it can be resource intensive, so you could put that on a separate server if that's going to be appropriate. And lastly, as I said, SharePoint is extremely scalable, so for super large organizations, you can add as many servers into the farm as, as is necessary so that you can appropriately handle the user load and the amount of content. So as I mentioned, a single server is very simple. Um, this involves using SQL Server Express, and that's appropriate for maybe up to about 50 users. Um, it has a limitation of 40 gigabytes of data, so that roughly translates to maybe about 10,000 documents. So probably what's more common is to have more than one server, as I mentioned, and that's when you create a small farm. And depending on how many of the different servers you involve, this thing can scale to millions of documents and hundreds of thousands of users. Very recently, SharePoint 2010 was released, um, and probably the most notable thing here is that it's 64-bit only. So SharePoint has to be installed on a 64-bit server. It will only run on Windows Server 2008 R2, and that also has to be 64-bit. And as far as the database goes, it could be SQL Server 2005 or 2008, uh, but again, it must be 64-bit. So obviously, uh, when budgeting for your SharePoint implementation, you've got to consider licensing. Uh, organizations with fewer than 50 users can probably get by with the free version uh, of both SharePoint and the database. Uh, if you're above 50 users, you probably need to at least purchase SQL Server. However, if you already have SQL Server, you can reuse it, so you won't be any extra licensing there. Um, Windows SharePoint Services or SharePoint Foundation, those are the free versions. That's probably the best value out there, but for larger organizations, Microsoft Office SharePoint Server slash SharePoint 2010, those versions uh, do have extra licensing fees per user, uh, but large organizations, it may be appropriate. Now, when you go to implement SharePoint, don't underestimate the value of having an experienced SharePoint implementation team. Um, you will need some technical expertise um, to avoid some rework down the road, um, as well as some of the supporting technologies like Microsoft.net. There are also some roles that's, that are involved in an implementation where you need to facilitate taxonomy planning as well as the requirements gathering from your different departments. And uh, as with any project, especially technology projects, um, they do have a, a, a capability to fail. And uh, you know, basically pro project, professional project management will help you mitigate that risk. Uh, so do consider having somebody dedicated who is experienced uh, in managing projects run your SharePoint implementation. It's also important to have a well-defined implementation process. Um, in most instances, you can complete a SharePoint uh, very simple one in about three weeks. I'd say most initial implementations are probably around six weeks, but for a larger organization, it could take up to three months or even six months or more. Um, I do highly recommend a phased approach when beginning your SharePoint implementation. You should very, do a very good job defining the scope, keep it fairly short, about six weeks, and make sure it delivers some short-term benefit as well as longer-term benefits. Uh, I would recommend implementing SharePoint department sites and team sites, enabling search, and putting out there some wiki capabilities so you can track standard operating procedures and best practices. In addition, I'd select one or two departments and create dashboards for those departments. Um, if you do need help planning your SharePoint implementation, DMC offers a SharePoint planning package at a very attractive point, price point, and we'll get together with the leaders of your different departments, make sure they're up to speed on the functionality, we'll work through a key performance indicator definition session, we'll then put together uh, essentially a, a visual design of your dashboards as well as your portal, um, we'll work with your IT team or with your IT infrastructure partner to make sure that you've got the uh, appropriate infrastructure set up to handle SharePoint. And then we'll go ahead and, and put together an implementation plan, putting together all the resources, the costs, and the timeline uh, to make your SharePoint in initiative extremely successful. So thank you for watching. Uh, I would very much welcome an opportunity, uh, opportunity to help you with your SharePoint portal uh, and make it a, a real success. 
So please don't hesitate to contact me with any questions, or if you'd like to enlist, enlist DMC support, I'd be happy to speak with you. My direct number is 312-386-7463. Thanks again for watching.